Good morning, Andy. I'm Kelly, and I'm going to be doing your cultural assessment today. Andy, what is your primary language? English. And if English was not your <coughs> primary language and you were not English proficient, I would have arranged for an interpreter. I requested that you fill out the heritage assessment form found on page 18 of our Jarvis Health Assessment Book beforehand, which you did, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Additionally, Andy told me that he does not use any folk remedies for any ailments. He does not use any non-traditional forms of health care. And Andy defines health as being disease-free and being of sound mind, body, and spirit. And he expects to be treated like a person and not a number by his health care providers. After reviewing the completed assessment tool, it shows me that Andy comes from a European Irish heritage and has a biomedical view of health. He has many functional support systems, and those systems include a stable, supportive family network, close family ties, and frequent contact with his parents, brother, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and his girlfriend. Andy relies on his Catholic religion to maintain his spiritual health, and he has a variety of friends, some of the same ethnic and religious backgrounds, and some different. Andy and his family have been well assimilated here in the U.S. and Texas for several generations, and he has sufficient socialization with no socialization needs unmet. Andy celebrates his Irish roots with a traditional St. Patrick's Day meal, otherwise his diet consists of easily available and non-specialty foods. Is that a true and accurate reflection, Andy? Yes. Okay. And so I will be incorporating this information into your wellness plan and it will allow me to better take care of you. So let's get started with your eye exam. I'm going to be asking you several yes or no questions to obtain an eye history from you. Do you have any difficulty seeing? No. And I would know that in white people greater than 40 years of age, the leading cause of blindness is age-related macular degeneration at 54%. And I would teach Andy about age-related macular degeneration because culturally and eventually he will be at risk. Any blurring? Mm -hmm. Any blind spots? No. Central vision is lost in macular degeneration with peripheral vision being preserved. And so do you have any eye pain, Andy? No. Any crossing of your eyes? No. Any redness? No. Any swelling? No. Any watering or tearing? No. Any history of eye injury? No. Any eye surgery? No. And have you been tested for glaucoma? Yes. And what was that outcome? Negative for okay. glaucoma. That's great, because glaucoma is a leading cause of blindness in the U.S. And it can occur at any age group, although um, white people are three times less likely than black people to get this disease. Glaucoma does not produce symptoms in its early stages, so early and ongoing comprehensive eye exams are very important. Do you have any need for glasses or contacts? Do you wear those? No. And so in 2006, 9.4% of whites had problems with vision, even though they had glasses. And poverty is an extenuating factor, with 26.4% of the population living within poverty levels reporting this problem. Have you ever had your vision tested, Andy? Yes. And uh, when was the last time that you did that? Two months ago. Okay. And what medications do you take? I'm not on any. Okay, good. And so I will be testing visual acuity next. Do you want to follow me? Sure. Okay. And so we're standing 20 feet away from the Snellen chart, and I'm going to have Andy cover his left eye. And go ahead and read the last line that you can see, Andy. Um, it'd be line 9, and that's L-E-F-O-D-P-C-T. Okay, and go ahead and try and read the next line down. Okay, it is F-O-F-L-T-D. E-O. Had some problem with that one. So Andy went ahead and did the left eye also, and that came out the same as the right eye. He has 20-15 vision, and that's excellent vision, Andy. You definitely don't need glasses for farsightedness. Screening for near vision uh, was performed upon Andy's arrival to the office this morning, and it was done by witnessing Andy filling out forms of small print. He accomplished this task easily and quickly without the use of any type of assistance, moving the papers inward or outward or any squinting at all. We're going to go ahead and do a, a confrontation test, and this tests your visual fields. I'm going to have you cover your right eye first, and I'm going to, uh, looking at me, I want you to let me know when you first notice my fingers coming into okay. your view. And so, right up here, Okay. left eye shows 50 degrees upward. Okay. 70 degrees downward. Okay. 90 degrees temporally. Okay. And 60 degrees nasally. Uh, you can go ahead and put that down now. The right eye showed the same degree of peripheral vision, and so this is an expected finding. 
I'm going to check uh, Andy's corneal light reflex next, and this um, I'm going to have him look at the pen light here, and I'm going to shine a light and see that both spots are at the same point on his eye, and that tells me that the corneal light reflex is symmetrical bilaterally, so Andy has no eye muscle weakness at all, and that's great. Um, next we're going to do the cover test, and what I'm going to have you do is take this card and cover your left eye, and go ahead and focus on my pen here. Now uncover your left eye. All right. As the left eye was uncovered, it held a steady gaze congruent with the right eye's gaze, and this was also true when we tested the right eye. No muscle weakness was detected in either eye. And so we're going to do what's called a diagnostic positions test next, Andy, and uh, what I'm going to have you do is look at the pen, and I'm going to have you follow it wherever it goes, the left superior and the left lateral and the left inferior shows parallel tracking with eyes smooth and fluid and no lag. The same test was performed on his right eye and it showed the same results. No muscle weakness or cranial nerve dysfunction was noted in either eye. Now generally I noted Andy's gait was strong and steady with ambulation during the Snellen exam. He avoids obstacles and he attends to visual stimuli quickly. His face is relaxed and no squinting is noted. Andy, go ahead and frown and furrow your eyebrows and then raise them up. Okay, symmetry is noted with appearance and, and movement. There's no scaling and no lesions noted anywhere there. Looking at his eyelids and lashes, the upper lids overlap the superior part of the iris. There's no ptosis or drooping. Skin is intact, no redness, no swelling, no discharge, no lesions. Go ahead and close your eyes, Andy, and now open them. Palpebral fissures are horizontal and proximate completely when closed. The palpebral fissures are horizontal, and this is congruent with Andy's Irish ethnicity. Um, his lashes are long, well populated, and evenly distributed and curved outward. His eyeballs, looking at them, they're aligned in his sockets, and there's no protrusion at all. Go ahead and look up. Eyeballs appear moist and glossy. There's tiny vasculature noted through the transparent conjunctiva, otherwise clear. There's a pink color over the lower lid and white over sclera. No swelling or lesions was noted there. Looking at his lacrimal glands up here and his puncta, there's no swelling at all and no excessive tearing. And pressing my index finger right here against Andy's lacrimal sacs, I note there's no punctal regurgitation at all. What I'm going to do next, Andy, is I'm going to look at your eye from the side. And looking at his corneas bilaterally, I see no, there are no irregularities, they're smooth and there's no opacities at all. His irises are brown and evenly colored and flat. The shape is round and regular. His pupils are round and regular and both pupil resting sizes are three millimeters. Go ahead and uh, look at my nose, Andy, sorry. Okay, there's direct and consensual light response noted that's brisk and constricts to one millimeter bilaterally, also with that other eye. Andy, go ahead and focus on the wall there. Andy's pupil is dilated at five millimeters. Now focus on the pen. Okay, I noticed a change in pupil size that constricts to two millimeters. So the pupils are equally round and reactive to light and accommodation and the convergence of eye axes are noted. What I'd like for you to do, Andy, is go ahead and keep focusing on that sign over there. I'm going to be shining a bright light in your eyes, and I'm going to be looking at your ocular fundus here. So I'm looking for a red reflex, which I found. Okay, so what I noticed with Andy's ocular uh, fundus is that his optic discs are located inferiorly and nasally and are round, yellow, orange, and distinctly demarcated with each eye. There are paired arteries and veins noted in each eye's quadrants with decreased caliber of vessels in the peripherally and with each eye. Uh, the general background of the fungus is, fundus is medium red, and there's no lesions or spots noted on either eye. The macula is one disc diameter, or DD in size, and is located 2DD temporal to the disc at 3 o'clock, and is slightly darker red-orange, and this is noted in each eye. Andy, to wrap things up, I just want to let you know that you have excellent vision and I found no irregularities with your eye exam today. Do you have any questions for me? No. Nope. Thanks so much for your time.